Welcome back to the Gen Z Speaks podcast. With me today, my co-host, Mr. Intel, Janish Thanky. How you doing? Doing great, man. Doing great. Last but not least, Matt Gutierrez, the future of real estate, business, everything. How you doing? I'm doing Mr. Okay, everything. Man. How you doing? I'm all right, man. CEO of everything. They call me Jack All Trades, Master or None. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, brother? Doing well. Doing well. Hanging in there. Um, hanging in watching. there, man. That's it. That's it. That's the that's the routine, man. Just hanging in there. Um, do you guys want to dive right into what we're going to discuss there? Or? Yeah, let's sure. just do it. Okay. So Matt recommended a movie to all of us. And we just wanted to change things up a bit and just talk about the movie since it has a lot of um, depth to it. Um, the name of the movie is Spiderhead. It just came out on Netflix. It's based on a short story in The New Yorker that's titled Escape from the Spiderhead by George Saunders. The short story was written in 2010, again, published in The New Yorker, and then Netflix adapted it into a movie. It stars Chris Hemsworth, um, Miles Teller, and then um, Journey Smollett. And so what are you guys' thoughts on the movie so far? I mean, should we describe them what the movie is? I guess just yeah, give a synopsis. small summary. Matt, why don't you just yeah. tell us what the movie is about? Yeah, I mean, first off, spoiler alert, right? We're talking about the film here. So, uh, I mean, so the film was interesting. Uh, I think there was a lot of ethical dilemmas kind of like displayed, and that's kind of the point of it. And that's kind of why like we wanted to discuss it really. Uh, but basically uh, there's a bunch of like, I, I want to call them inmates, right? Because they're all people that should be in jail, but they chose a path of um, kind of human, human testing essentially. So they're, they're like human tests kind of um, like, you know, rodents uh, and, you know, they're testing out rodents? for this guy. <laughs> you, you know how mice and rodents are yeah, usually yeah, tested. Yeah, yeah. They're I mean, kind that's of like actually, that. wow. I don't think. Yeah. yeah so that's right. kind of how I I thought of it as I was watching it. They're stuck in this facility, a beautiful facility at that, but they're stuck in a facility, um, and they're just kind of rodents. They're waiting um, to be tested on and to see uh, which kind of potions or serums work best. If, if you call it serums, probably right. Um. Mm -hmm. right like i mean they're just liquid drugs that liquid they give drugs. yeah yeah mm -hmm. liquid drugs i guess it's not painful um, though i mean i mean not the consumption well, of it but just effects of it are painful like yeah exactly it's not you know it's not painful to consume so yeah so each each basically liquid drug is like a different type of um you know feeling so one is like a feeling of love like an like an exuberance of it so you'll feel like oh man i'm like in love with this person or like i feel this type of way about this music right now another is like uh it's called verbulase and you kind of speak without turn. So like you go ahead and you say whatever's on your mind and there's no, um, no filter really. And then there's others like dark, uh, dark reflexin. And that's essentially uh, a drug that makes you go psychotic in your head. So you're not necessarily angry. You're not necessarily mad. You're just, you're, you feel stuck. You feel like you're in this like constant state of psychosis, right? Like where you're, you're constantly feeling like unease that that's the right word unease. Um, and so this film goes on and, and uh, the main, so there's two main actors, right? There's one guy, Abnesty, and then another guy, Jeff, and, and Jeff's the one that he's an inmate and Abnesty is, uh, or Mr. Abnesty, I guess, is like the doctor dude, scientist. That, the scientist, yeah, the scientist mm -hmm. who kind of runs, um, who kind of runs it, right? Runs the show and he puts like all these drugs in these, in these inmates and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, the film goes on where the inmate Jeff, he kind of, he, he's going along with it. He's been there for like years at this point, uh, but he starts to realize like something isn't right here. Something's not normal. Um, and he starts to feel like he's being used. Like, sure, he signed up for this, but he's being like unnaturally used. Um, and so that's a bunch of ethical dilemmas come along that we'll discuss. But that's essentially the synopsis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeff is played by Miles, Miles Teller, Teller. And then Chris Hemsworth plays a scientist guy. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's basically you summed it up pretty well. It's uh, a bunch of prisoners just taking, I guess, taking the medications that they're given, not medications, drugs that they're given. And then the Chris Hemsworth character is basically seeing how they react to it. And he basically is exploiting all of the prisoners, essentially. Um, I before, Jennifer, before, I, I just want to say before we go into some of the, uh, um, you know, moral dilemmas or, or like, existential topics about 
what the film um, you know entails or what what it what it's trying to portray what do you guys think about just like the acting and you know just uh, overall like cinema uh, you know cinema yeah. uh, cinematic perspective so real quick we all read there's a short story too we all read that short story um and th- there's very i think distinct differences in what you're talking about like the actors and the people being portrayed um so real quick, I'll, I'll, th- there's a guy in, in there, you know, Miles Teller, he's like a normal dude. He's not very good looking, but he's not very ugly. He's like a normal guy. Um, and then there's this guy named Rogan, and this is the one that stuck out to me the most, right? Um, so in the film, they're given, I don't remember what it's called, uh, but it's basically the drug for love. And in that drug, like whoever it is, it doesn't matter if they're the ugliest person in this world, like you have like this, like you're in love with them, right? You're enamored by them. And uh, it leads to like, you know, sex and like other things as well. Uh, but the, thing, the the funniest part is, in my opinion, and it's like extremely distinct and it makes sense why Hollywood would do this in my, it, to me, um, is like in the film, after Jeff goes ahead and meets with two chicks and, you know, they end up falling in love and then falling out of love because the drug was diluted out of their system. Uh, he sat in a room with this big dude, Rogan. Like, he's like a monster, right? He has tattoos all over his face. He's probably like six foot eight, like 400 pounds of just like meat. And, uh, and he's just sitting there. And Jeff goes, no, 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 no. I am not doing this. And he like completely flips, right? And to me, it was hilarious. Uh, but... In the short story, it was just another normal dude. The dude wasn't very good looking. He wasn't ugly, but he was just a normal guy. And like in the short story, there was significance in that, uh, right? Because they're just normal people kind of going through the motions. Uh, But I think it was funny that Hollywood had to make him like this big dude uh, just to distinctly like show like Jeff could fall in love with this monstrous drug. So I I think that was very distinct. I think that is a good point, but I think the normality in the story kind of uh, adds to the bigger picture where, you know, it's just like, am I just and like, it kind of portrays the story in that I'm just another guy, you know, Jeff, I'm just another guy, just like this guy. And what, like, what is the meaning of love? Right. Like I, we fell in, we both fell in love with, uh, you know, the, these women and like, we're just normal guys. There's no differences. So I, I feel like it kind of add like in the short story, right. It adds to the fact it adds to the bigger um, theme of the story if that makes sense i think my overall thoughts are the movie was average i would give it a six out of ten the story is really good it's based on a really interesting concept but i think they just messed it up uh by casting chris hemsworth don't get me wrong he did an okay job but in in the short script chris the character Chris Hemsworth is not in shape. Like in, he's in the short, in the short, in the short story. Like he's like this guy out of breath, and he's not. I, I guess Chris Hemsworth. Like, you know, it's fine. Like if he was built, I don't care about that part. It's just, I think Chris Hemsworth was just not the right person to do this. They basically casted him to sell the movie. Um, like if you saw Netflix's uh, promos and stuff, it was Spiderhead, Chris Hemsworth, Netflix, and that's it. Like it was just him and his yeah. face all over. So they 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 casted him to sell the movie. Did he do an okay job? Yes, he did. Did he do justice to it? Absolutely not. Um, there's, I, I'm thinking of so many other people that could have done a better job because name some, name some. Joaquin Phoenix. Honestly, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Joaquin do you think Phoenix. The charisma was part of it, though. No, there's no charisma. No, I don't. I, I see. Chris, I think Chris Chris Hemsworth had some charisma. I don't think he needs to be charismatic, the character, the scientist, at least. But also, dude, this thing is in the screenplay that they wrote. They took up. They took out so much stuff that was in the short story. In terms of, I mean, they had to obviously because they're trying to change the story here and there. But yeah. the movie, it, the short story itself was just supposed to be a drama. That's what I got from it. There's no hints of comedy in there. It's not supposed to be funny at all. But they, but they tried to make like hints of. They tried to like have dark comedy in there that just didn't work, in my opinion. Like if they stuck to the true like depths of the story and like did just. just just tried their best to stick to it. I think it, it would have been better, but they I, just made it. I agree with you, Ibrahim. I think the dark humor, like it was fine. Like it starts certain parts, like Matt said, you know, the big guy with the tattoos, it's like it's, it's cool. But like, I think when I read a short story, it has more of a serious like tone to it. And you can definitely like, it definitely gets you thinking more than if when you're just watching the movie. And I, I do feel like for like a lot of movies, it, it is hard to replicate that dramatic uh, tone that's displayed in 
uh, short stories, especially especially with like all the writings, because there's a lot of internal dialogue that um, what's his name Jeff has right, and it's it, it's harder to display that in the movie. Uh, you know they could have done it through a voiceover though i was thinking about it in the end he had a voiceover in the end which was so weird like he didn't have a voiceover the entire movie right yeah and and then in the end he just randomly had a voiceover it didn't make any sense because Mm -hmm. he definitely should have had a voiceover The, the movie should have been i mean it is told through jeff's lens but i think again like the movie was just trying to like get at really deep things but the way it was told was so weird to me i was i was just thrown off guard and like the details that they added i just i just thought they could go so much further with it like i think the short story gave them a good foundation to go to really explore this topic of just being human i would say i think that's what the movie explores but but i think the movie just i don't know they they just didn't go they went in a different direction that i don't think they should have gone what do you think of that so, I okay. First off, I, I agree. I think they the reason they uh, they did Chris Hemsworth to sell it. I don't think he did a bad job. I think, I think maybe in the terms of like drama and like how the story should have been portrayed, sure. But as a film in itself, I think like the charisma, I think the charismatic aspect of Chris Hemsworth made sense. Like he's a scientist, and not all scientists are. I mean. I don't think it's like a natural tell that a scientist is charismatic, right? They're typically logical. They're typically like, this is what I'm doing and this is where I'm going to be. Um, but the reason to me, it, it drew so much attention is because he was charismatic. Like he wasn't just a scientist. He was also like, like a, I want to say like a humanist or like somebody that was able to like tap into other people's like emotions. And that's why him and Miles Teller or Jeff, they gain, they gain such like a, a relationship, right? I mean, there's one scene where they're sitting there which I don't think was the most impactful scene, but I think it did okay in telling like what was happening there, like why the charisma was so important, uh, where they were sitting there and they got drunk together and they kind of told each other each other's stories. Um, and obviously Chris Hemsworth wasn't very honest, but that was that was the key to it, right? That was the key of the charisma to, to you know, reach each one of the inmates and say, hey, I'm a good guy. Just I, I know you you're, you may not be the best guy, but I'm a good guy and I'm trying to help you out. We're in this together, right? I'm here just doing what my boss is telling me, which we later learn is a lie. But that's that's the whole role of it. Rather than something of a more serious tone, where the scientist is just doing what the scientist wants to do. Like this is this is my goal here. And in my opinion, like a stereotypical scientist will do it without the concern of another's emotions or the person's feelings right i mean or am i wrong that was also the part that threw that kind of threw me off was the fact that uh what's chris's character's name again mr what's it abnesty i'm just gonna call him chris so chris hemsworth um his um the scientist yeah the, the scientist right it was him orchestrating the entire thing but i think it would have been deeper if it was something that the state was involved in that they knew exactly what was happening as opposed to just one man going rogue and like exploring these different things with these different inmates that's another thing that i thought that well the state was involved it just wasn't they didn't know though what he was doing though they They didn't know that he was keeping him longer yeah no but they didn't know how how much exploitative he was he was being with them like the killing of that one one of the ladies and that's where the police came afterwards because he told them what was happening so i think it would have been deeper if it was something like more overarching where the state itself was really involved and knew exactly what was happening they could have avoided that sometimes come with science fiction if they went in that direction but nonetheless i think um that i don't necessarily agree with man because if we think about swan song similar concept nobody knew right and but it was still like effective I, I so when you said it was similar to swan song how is it similar it's so much different than swan song swan song Just is like, like, a, like mm-hmm. how's the set is very similar i get that like the production design yeah like the production i think design, they, they caught i think ideas. they shot in a similar location or something so one of the production mm-hmm. designs i mean but i don't think it's similar at all to swan song I, was, I really they're both think. dystopian that's no, what I meant by Swan it. Swan Song yeah. was just so much more personal. Like I, I mean, it was more. Sure, sure. It sure. was just yeah, told it, so much in a better way, man. And it wasn't based off of. It was more it was cinematic. Like yes. Yes. I mean, this was cinematic too. This was shot beautifully. Like cinematically, think... the 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 DP did a great job. I think. I just think the story, the, the dialogue, and the, the story, they just messed it all up. And I, I, I actually have a problem with like the overarching, like the whole story. I guess there's one like major flaw that I saw. I was like it was we know that it was full of inmates right and inmates tend to be a little more you know aggressive or a little more um, rebellious i guess you can say 
So even typically, yeah, stereotypically, right? So I I don't know how um like none of the inmates ever asked any questions or like kind of rebelled against like you know uh we're not doing this we don't want to do this maybe they signed up for it earlier but then now they're you know saying I don't want to do it like I guess in the end we can see a little bit of that but like like when they're taking the uh, drug that makes them sad but I feel like there would have been way more like uh you know th- this is wrong like I'm trying to get out of here like what's happening and I, I feel like they could explore that more I feel like that's a human aspect too where you want freedom and you, where you want where you don't want to be treated as like a lab rat I guess I think that was the most interesting part actually because I don't think that was a problem because the whole point of the film is that this this laboratory that they're in is so luxurious like they they're privileged to be there you know they can just literally roam around as they want they can cook their own food they can have all these like luxuries like they can watch tv they can they they even get to go outside like on fridays and so what why should they be rebellious because there's no like there's no nothing separating them from each other like it's very open community based and it doesn't seem like a jail yeah, that it just seems like agree a, with you yeah it just seems like a vacation house to be honest <laughs> like yeah. a bunch of people living i mean it is yeah, i don't know it does feel I mean, more like you know they're being like if i i was putting myself in an inmate like even though the luxuries are there i feel like that's just to distract you from the fact they're they're mm-hmm. treating you like rats like that that's I like i feel like so, Janice, would you prefer to be in prison or would you prefer to be doing that I would prefer to do this drug stuff. Well, Janish, what do you what do you say though? I don't know. I have to think about it because the drug stuff it's it, it's really like it's taking away a part of you, kind of. If you think, but they're literally using you in a way where they're t- testing on you. Like you're literally like fucking girls you've never met because they're like you know like or you know doing all this stuff where it's like th- there's there's a certain level of. Um, morality where you, which you can't cross and it, it feels like this is really crossing that uh so I, w- I would say i would rather be in prison to be honest because like these drugs like we don't know what's in it like they they can make this more intense later like who like yeah we only saw the ones where they're doing love and the one that makes you sad but like who's to dark say and flocks huh yeah the, the dark and flocks flock yeah that, that was gnarly yeah like so here, here's the thing bro like so i i think it's really easy to say like sure like like humanely it's not okay but dude prison like it's literally built to dismantle you so you're not human right at least when you're taking this drug like you had that humane decision you had the decision like hey i don't want to be dismantled i don't want to be psychologically messed with right um sure the drugs inherently will mess with you like that but at least you're making that decision at least you're able to roam somewhere without the 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 feeling of other people going to try to mess with you or try to make you do things that you don't want to do in in this circumstance you're doing stuff you don't want to do but you're willing to do it like you made that decision rather than another prisoner coming at you and making you do like very uncomfortable things right that you wouldn't be okay with and that you have no decision over you have no like there's nothing you can do about it right it's either you do those things that they want you to do or you die and that's what it is. And either way, you're locked up like a lab rat, right? Either way, you're in a prison cell. Either way, you're stuck behind fences and electrical wire and all of that, except it's just the difference is like this, the circumstance. And like, it, does that make sense? Yeah, but I, you know, I'm thinking about it now and it's really hard to pick. I take that back. I don't know if I would do the the drug slash laboratory stuff because it's he's Janish is right. It's, the, it's just the illusion of free will that you have in there. It's the same thing, right, but, even but you're locked it, up. But even, even but in, in if, prison, if like illusion, okay, okay, prison is like, so much worse. Though. I mean, it's like yeah, like the inmates can fight with you and stuff like that. But like no, I, I think even mentally, bro. Like people, I, like, I know people that have to. been to jail and yeah. have come out of jail, dude. And they're different, man. It's not the same. You 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 genuinely are different you're mentally broken down into something that's less human. Like you feel, you feel less than, than your peers. Does that make sense? Like when, when I would speak to them, it's like the way that they present themselves is like, they're less than me, which, which is bullshit, right? Like they made a mistake and they overcame it. But the way prison is designed is to break you down. So you're not like a civilian. I, yeah. I just feel like these, mm-hmm. the, the chemicals or these drugs would do more harm long-term, you know, like, 
people get tripped up with like you know one like uh experience with like heroin and all these drugs and like these drugs are even crazier than you know like regular like cocaine and stuff like that so it just feels like these are messing mm. more with your head than like see that's that's the interesting part because we don't know what's inside these drugs in the movie at least like we don't know if they're like uh if they have any long term yeah like we don't know how that works i mean all we know is they hit specific emotional impulses in our bodies and invoke a certain reaction i mean they're nothing like the drugs that we know here um but you're right we don't know the i would also say that that, uh, it made me think like this uh you know story and the movie made me think a lot about um what we're willing to do as scientists as innovators right like right are are we are we willing to um test on humans even though um you know that maybe they want to be tested on that's that's better than prison for them but is that even if they agree with that is that still morally right is that still morally like let's say we have some inmates that you know murder like 10 people and they say instead of jail i want to i want to do i want to be a part of experiment is it like would that be fine with people what do you think i don't know I, i i really don't know i'm still considering it because I would like to say just yeah, like if they if they're fine with it and like you know they're they're already in the wrong like they they've done all this bad stuff uh, in society yeah. you know we can test on them but still just that 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 sentence of we can just test on them it just doesn't sound right right what do you think your room uh, it's like if you commit a very bad crime let's say murder right and you have these two options if you if this if person A were to choose the drug slash laboratory route, they would be helping out society more than just rotting in a jail cell for the rest of their life. Technically, let's say if the scientist guy really did have good intentions, which it seems like he did, but then he go, but then his own ego gets in the way of things, right? Kind of, sort of. I don't think they had good intentions. Okay. Well, I'm saying, let's say. Well, oh, wait, did. let's get into that later. Let's get into okay, that later. Okay, That's okay. another ethical dilemma. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, but you're touching on it right now by asking that question, because I think if I, the, the prisoner, like currently in our criminal justice system, right? People go in a jail cell and I, I believe um, I was doing like a research paper a couple of years ago and one prisoner in the United States costs the taxpayer on average 80 to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, prisoners have rights don't get me wrong and all that stuff but it's just we have so much our we have Why do we one have quarter america has a one quarter of the world's inmates by the way it's insane our criminal justice system is insane we put people in jail for the most minute things like you know weed and stuff like it's getting better things are getting better but i'm just saying historically our criminal justice system you know three three strikes and you're out stuff like that it's not good and so what i mean it's these are like really deep. This is a really deep question. So, I mean, technically speaking, both are equal punishments, I would say. Getting tested on and then rotting in a jail cell. For In terms of justice, they're both equally bad punishments. One, though, can be good for society and the other may not be as productive. For society. But, but the thing is, like, we're, we're assuming we're assuming this is a big yeah. assumption that we're making is that all these things we're going to test uh these inmates with won't kill them or won't have like oh they might kill them isn't it their choice though because all the inmates they applied for and they had to get approved it wasn't like they were just randomly selected so they wanted to sign up for something like this so it was their choice in the beginning at least in the movie itself Uh, right right but i I still feel like you know uh it's kind of like kind of like with the death penalty it's like yeah they they can have like they they want to they can be like you know i'll just kill me i don't want to go to jail for my lifetime but you know we don't do that where it's like the experiment, it's like, oh, we're choosing to kill them just for, I guess, science. I, I guess when you think about it, yeah. But in the I'm movie, thinking about though, it. it's not death, though. It's not the, like, he doesn't want, the, Chris Hemsworth doesn't want to kill Heather. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking happens. about the movie. I'm just saying, like, in, in, general, in general, if we're, if we're going to push, you know, it, like, scientific mm-hmm. research and stuff, there's going to be stuff that we test people with that might kill them, you know, or might do some really, like, bad side effects. Sure. I'm just saying like that this is just think about it like utilitarian point of view like in my opinion i think this could take like that stance like what's the greater good i think even brought up a good point like each tax i mean for each person in there people will pay 80 to 100 i mean taxpayers pay 80 to 100 thousand dollars per person in there 
and we get nothing out of it, right? The only thing we get out of it is one less bad person on the streets, which fair, that, that's deserving. There shouldn't be bad people on the streets. But the thing is, we have to pay for something that shouldn't be there anyway, right? Why not get something in return? And so, sure, it may kill these people, but, I mean, the more gnarly the drug, I mean, the more gnarly the prisoner, right? So the prisoners that do the worst crimes, maybe they get the worst type of drug, if that, or maybe not worst drug, but uh, most, maybe sporadic drug or, like, harm, maybe not harmful even. But d- does that make sense? Like, the one uh, that we don't know. I feel like, like the, there's a very thin line, right? Like what we're, we're talking about where it can get really like out of hand where, you know, people might try things that are drugs that are more riskier because like more risky. The, that, yeah. Yeah. Like they, they don't care about the value. Like e- even though like, yeah, these you guys say like these guys signed up for it. We still have to value life in a certain way where, you know, even if they have did they that, value life. Did they value their own life? Did they value lives? But that, that's why we don't do the death penalty, right? Where it's like... We, in California. Well, in most states, I think there's like two states that has the death penalty, so... No, I think it's... I don't know. I think it's more than that. Is it? I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll look at check that look what's, what's more than what? Uh, what states have the death penalty? Well, that's... I, I mean, I think a lot of states have abolished it, but... Okay, but I think this movie, though, for me, was more about the human, like, experience itself. Like a lot of people, I feel like it was uh, oh, no, 27 yeah. states. Yeah, see? that's true. More, more states do have death penalty. Yeah. 27 states have death yeah. penalties? Yeah, and it's really expensive to conduct death penalties as well. Really? But, but, yes, it's very expensive. In, but it's still lethal. cheaper than keeping an inmate for there for 10 years, 20 years. Yeah. Wait, why, sure. why is it expensive to do death penalty? Like the lethal topic, injections? But... Like the lethal, the, the lethal injections cost a lot of money, I believe. I mean, you can look this Cyanide? up. Cyanide? Okay. Correct, me, correct me if I'm wrong on this. You can definitely look this up. But I think uh, it is still expensive. But not expensive to house someone for 30 years, no. Yeah. No. Uh, sorry, sorry. What were you going to say? You bring my I was up. just saying, number one, prisoners do a lot of labor as well. Like a lot of prisoners like do labor. And so they do provide value to, to people, some prisons. But, but, but... um. I, I I think we're getting into what I You're very what, right, bro. Movie? What one point two million dollars? Wow, I mean that's still like still. So what that, state is that? Quite in? a bit, man. I mean, what state no, this is, is just the meat. This is the median death penalty case cost. One point two million dollars. One point two six. Yeah. What? I, okay, I didn't know it was gonna be that much. So yeah, I I but wasn't this movie more about the human experience though? Like it, it wasn't about I wasn't thinking about these things. The only thing that I was just thinking about was like the last line that the guy says. I'll just say it. I don't care if it, if it spoils. It doesn't really spoil the whole movie. I don't think there's any elements of spoil in it. We haven't touched on anything that's spoiled it because all the things we've talked about so far are pretty evident. Like it's not a spoiler that yeah, we're talking. You can about. probably find it on the plot. Somewhere. Yeah, it's it's very easy. But but there's one thing though that that he said. So Miles Teller's character, Jeff, in the end, randomly again, does this voiceover, which I think he should have done from the beginning, would have made the movie more deeper. But he said, I wish there was a self-forgiveness drug. You take it and everything starts over. Everyone you ever loved, you did right by them, treated them like gold, and you feel like it's all ahead of me. This beautiful life, all the pleasures of it, the love I could give, the good I could do, but there's no drug like, but there's no drug like that. So we're going to have to do it for ourselves. I think that's what summed up the movie for me, at least was like, you know, we have to just live out our lives, man. And like do our best to be good people. Again, it's a really basic, like moral, but I think that was what the movie was trying to get at and just could have explored so many different things. I don't don't think it did. It didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I I think um, also. uh, Yeah, no, sorry. I lost my train of thought. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, there's this one. So I don't know if you saw, but on my private story, I put like that, that philosophizes this. What's his name? What's a flaw? Saran. So there's this philosopher named Saran and he talks about kind of, uh, he talks about um, suicide and like depression basically on the, in this podcast. And this was honestly one of the best podcasts I've heard in a long time. Like it was just beautiful. It was only 30 minutes and it was just beautiful. Um, so I highly recommend it. Uh, but he talks about kind of what you're what you're saying like suffering right that's essentially what it is for i mean self-forgiveness lack of self-forgiveness is like suffering and you're just kind of in this state of of suffering and how do you get around it you kind of have to like embrace it 
And the only way to like be okay in life and like kind of just go through life is by embracing it and by like trudging through it and gritting through it. And like, that's what human is about. Like you talk about humanity, what human is being about, it, it's suffering. It's, it's taking control of, of yourself, right. Of the circumstances that you've been presented in life and, you know, the actions that either you committed or have been committed against you. And, um, I just thought that was really interesting and I highly recommend that podcast, but um yeah go ahead Janish yeah no I, I was just saying um uh, I think definitely that Ibrahim you're right this movie was a, I mean this movie the story everything was about the human experience you know it explored like uh certain parts of human experience like emotion like is emotion just uh chemicals in our brain or is it something like like when we think about love like what is love right like what they said that after they took these drugs uh, they were in love. They were in love for the period of time they were intoxicated, I guess. And it kind of gets you thinking of like, you know, basic human things like love, uh, you know, uh, uh, hatred, like all, are all these things just chemicals fear. in our brain? Yeah, yeah, fear, right? Are all these things just chemicals and different things just happening in our brain? Or do they have a higher, uh, you know, uh, value we uh to them that maybe that I we think, just give i think love and hate they're very they're very dra they're drastically different than emotion in my opinion i feel like love and hate are are very innate like you either like you, you can't the thing is most people say you can't even describe love right like all these poets have different ways to describe love and all these philosophers describe it a certain way um and, and hate is, is the same concept right it's just the reverse of it uh, and, and so in my opinion, like I, I can't compare fear. I can't compare anger. I can't compare like being joyful to love and hate. It's just something that that's there. And, and like, we, we just feel it. I, I know, I know that's what emotion means. You just feel it, but I don't, I don't really know how to articulate it. But, but exactly right. That that's what, that's the thing I'm trying to say, Matt, right? Like we, we give this value to love where it's like, love is something that's not just regular. It's, it can't be attained by you know a substance but what this story is doing is saying this drug is gonna give you love right it's gonna give you the same love and if we had a drug like that what would that mean to our society you know what would that mean to us is it do you believe it's really love i was thinking about that too actually bro it, do you, i don't think it's actually love i think it's because love is like a human thing right and this is this is producing like a fictitious emotion this not even emotion because i don't think love's an emotion yeah i'll say emotion it was more lustful right it wasn't really love it was like i am i'm i'm present with this person and i feel this way about them but it's not like i've experienced a b and c i i've experienced all this stuff with this person and now i feel love for them because of all these experiences that have like interconnected that was, together but that was what was interesting though in the short story the way george sanders or saunders wrote it he made it appear that the, that the drug itself made jeff feel like he knew heather or rachel like he'd known her for forever like it, it it so all the experiences that you're saying that it takes to you know love someone it was in that moment he felt all of them and he and then it was right as the drug like receded he he oh yeah that's I, I, like, I, I, that was the whole thing true. i don't think yeah. i don't think the the question we should be asking is is that drug really uh causing love i think it should just be a given that love like for the story's sake that that drug makes you fall in love like the real love but I think the question he's trying to say is, what does that mean, right? Like, what does it mean to love someone? I think that's what he's trying to say. Uh, not not whether if that drug is really, you know, um, making people fall in love or not, right? But yeah, I think um, I think that was a huge uh, huge point in the story where you know after the drugs wore off, uh, Ab the scientist would ask. Um, Ask Jeff and uh, be like, "Were you? Are you still in love?" They would do like a bunch of tests, like, "Are you still in love?" Or, which one do you want? Which uh, do you want, Heather or um, what's the other one's name? Um, Rachel. Heather. Rachel. Do you want Heather or Rachel to take the dark and uh, the drug that makes you really sad and you know depressed? I guess. Yeah, you that's a good. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, man. Like, so honestly, I was thinking about like what could have prevented him from giving them the dark influx, like from presenting Miles Teller from taking, uh, from 
choosing who to give the dark and flux to. And I noticed Chris Hemsworth, this wasn't in the short story, but in, in the film, Chris Hemsworth told his assistant, dude, uh, you know, how can I, how can I tell the committee or the government or whoever that this stuff really works if I don't take it myself? And so if he just took the, if he did the same thing he did to Miles Teller and the girls, right. And he ended up falling in love and having sex and doing all this stuff with the girls then he would have known himself. Right. And he would have known that Miles Teller truly was telling the truth when he said, I have no bias, whether to give Rachel or to give Heather the dark and flux. So if he did it himself, mm -hmm. all of it would have been like abstain. You know, that's also something that the film could have explored more. The fact that Chris Hemsworth took the drugs himself. I think it was there. It's just, it, it, they didn't do again. They could have gone. That was actually a good addition to the, I guess the writers made. Yeah, I think of so. Chris Hemsworth taking the drug. It was so much powerful. One thing, what do you guys think about? But the they relation? failed. They, they didn't do it well. They didn't do it. They, well. they only you, gave him the lustful drug. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you guys That's think about? Only, huh? What do you think about the his relationship with um, what's her name? Uh, uh, sorry, I had her name pulled up. Uh, she, I haven't seen her in any. The kitchen uh, girl, right? No, 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 Journey Smollett's character. Uh, what do you guys, I mean, her, his love interest. I mean, I think that was a tangent that was so useless. But don't get me wrong, Journey Smollett's acting was amazing in this. She did a great job. But what was the point of that whole tangent? In the short story, he's talking about his mother and like how, you know, George says like his mother's hair grew like thinner and thinner as she saw her son on trial and stuff like that. Do you think that they could have used like her mother more instead of like the love interest? Because the love interest doesn't add much to the story. I, I don't know why that love interest was that part they added there. You know what I mean? Like in the movie, like it, it didn't make sense to me. Like I, I think I, it, it was just to add dramatic effect. I don't think there was much intention behind it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, I feel like that's the shortcoming of the movie where there's a lot of things where they could have dove in a little deeper and explore just, just a little bit more. They just I feel like they were there, but the stakes weren't go, there, yeah. They just had yeah. to go a little deeper to make it that much better or more dramatic yeah. mm -hmm. well like intensely dramatic though right because it wasn't her, her stuff wasn't very intense but it was just like like your high school drama type stuff you know what i mean it, it's just to no. add some flavor to it but but the end scene with her is powerful though when she the end scene that was, was amazing yes. the, her was, acting in that was wow i was like i was really impressed but but i mean again the scene of the movie i think that was that was yeah. but then again they try to have a comedic effect to it in, in the middle of it and then in the end which was like so stupid in my well opinion. okay i don't think it was really comedic though it was just like it, it, that was showing how Chris Hemsworth was truly heartless. He was just cold. It was yeah, just a fake that's persona. That's so obvious, of bro. Like that's the most obvious way to show. There, there could be so much. Oh, like, true. Yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, very true. You know, dark comedy is like Barry, bro. The show that we're that we're watching. Yeah. That's true dark comedy. This is not. This is trying to be comedy. Not. This is not trying to be comedy. Sorry. This is trying to in, in, like insert jokes that just come off as awkward to me. Like that's my problem with it. They should have just truly adhered to the drama aspect. Like, just truly make it, like, a deep, like, a dark, dark type of movie, in my opinion. Okay, you know? but the thing is, bro, a lot of people aren't very, like, they're not very... Forget about honestly, people. If they're putting Chris Hemsworth in it, just explore. Go to a different place with him. At least, he's charming, bro. He Again, he's charming. You could have explored a different aspect but of his I'm personality. saying, like, the viewers aren't... I don't think every viewer is necessarily that deep to, like, but, notice it. But if they have... No, I think they are, man. You're giving... Come on. The audience... I Bro, I, I think like, a lot of people watch films. I don't think they watch films how we watch films in order to find the ethical dilemmas. I think they watch films just to be entertained. Really? I, I don't I, know. I think... I think... No. Uh, I think you can do both, though. I think you can entertain to the general public as well as the enthusiasts. Uh, and a lot of films have done this, I feel like. Not with every film, though. This film, I don't know. I'm just thinking of more like... Yes, they could have done better. Darker. I think we all agree. Yeah. They could have done better. <laughs> yeah, they could have done better. <laughs> okay. um, you know what this movie reminded me of? Nine Days. Like, it, it, hints of it. Because it was getting at, like, the... Like, dude, the inmates are there for, like, mistakes that they did. And they're they're good people, right? But they've done really bad things. And one moment is not going to define the rest of their lives. That's what I kept on thinking about, like how Miles Teller's character was driving that car that day. And of course, what he did was wrong. He was drunk driving. Nobody should be doing that. Nobody should be excessively drinking anyways. But that's a different thing. But, you know, you know what I mean? Like he was doing that. And one little hour of his life is has now destroyed his entire life. And you know? his love. OK, fair. 
that maybe, but his love interest, I don't know her name in the film, but the journey girl, Emma. that was Emma. Emma, Like yeah. how she got in the car, but it's, that was cool to see like how in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're getting okay. spoilers, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we're giving spoilers, but like Fine. her, she, she killed her daughter. She did. She right? who? She killed her daughter. Oh, she you're left, talking about Journey. She left I'm the daughter. About, no, no, no. I'm talking about uh, what's, what's talking his about? name? Miles Teller's his. Yeah. His no, yeah, yeah. Love his and like how oh, she was in the car and how in okay, his memory yeah. throughout the film they were they were tricking the audience into saying that he only only his friend died, but it was also yeah. like his. I guess she was her fiance or, or his well, girlfriend. Or girlfriend, whatever. love, and whatever. Yeah. So okay, even like Miles tell like obviously that that's really unfortunate, and he was wrong for it, and he should he deserves to go to jail for it, right? Uh, but I think her uh, Emma's right. That that like, that girl Journey Smollett is that her name? No, I don't know what her name is. Okay, but Just, well, whatever Journey's Journey. character, she her crime Lizzie. was a lot more horrendous. Lizzie, Lizzie. Yeah. Lizzie. Lindsay. Lizzie. So Lizzie. I I think her crime was a lot more horrendous and it was a lot deeper. Like she went to work with her daughter in her car and then left her daughter in the car. But was it though, like, bro? I was thinking about that. I was thinking gnarly, about how man. which is worse though, because she didn't intentionally leave her there, man. She just for, of course she, not. Bro, man, I know. But look, what she did was man. Don't get me wrong. Was voluntary manslaughter? I think that's what she was in jail for. I'm not condoning what she did. I'm just saying. If you compare the two crimes, that's what also I was thinking about. They're pretty much the same. One guy was drunkly, he was being careless, and the other was being careless too. But, but, the, just, but the, I think the key difference is all three of them in the car were drunk. And they all decided to get in the car with Miles Seller, right? I mean, the same situation could happen if his buddy drove or if the girl drove. I mean, it could have happened, right? I, that That's like an equal chance, but she... That's what I'm saying, though, took bro. her daughter to work and then left her in 105 degree weather while she was working. Nine month old right? daughter. But that's what I'm yeah. saying, man. Like, it's that's what I'm saying. What if, you know, I was thinking about these things. They're normal. They were normal people before, just like all of us. Right. Mm -hmm. They were normal people living their lives. But then life just took a grasp of them. Like shit just happened. And, you know, they now have to deal with the consequences. That's what I was okay. just thinking of something gnarly that I was kind of thinking about. Yeah. The, okay. The think movie. about it like this. So I had an ethics class in college and I brought this up one time. So I think anything in life like deserves consequence, right? So whether you do something good, that consequence is a positive thing. If you do something bad, that consequence is a negative thing, right? So if somebody falls upon something and is lucky and, and they, or not lucky even like they intentionally because drunk driving is intentional right and like leaving the daughter in the car is intentional so if they intentionally do something good and, and they get rewarded for it do they not deserve that it's the same thing because the consequence is just equivalent just on the opposite side of the spectrum oh no they deserve i they deserve the jail time i'm not saying I'm, I'm just saying like to think i'm just putting myself in their shoes and like thinking like man if i hadn't just done this little thing or if i just you know i, I could have just avoided 40 30 years that's what i'm it's that's what's so shocking to me is like life is so uh, you're right, fragile you're, it's so fragile yeah man. like you don't know what's to come you don't like know you, you don't know what one little mistake can lead up to a big chaos you know and same like, concept if you're if you're in business and you're trying to be successful like what if you didn't take that account on and that account didn't make you 10 million dollars it's the same concept right and it, it, you're absolutely right, man. It's very, life is fragile and life is like deserves to be a lot of people say be careless and free with life. Right. And maybe <laughs> in some circumstances, but it's like life deserves to be taken seriously and, and your decisions deserve to be taken seriously. In my opinion. Mm, mm, mm. That's true. That's true. So, I mean, overall film was okay. Um, I think, I think the basis behind it was good. Like the actual story was good, could have been displayed better. But um, isn't the short story just written so beautifully? And they were yeah. like, the screen was good. so shallow, bro. Oh my god, I don't know yeah. who wrote this film. It was a disaster. I also not, think sorry, the short disaster, story but... is like, I liked how they used um, sentences where it's just like very, just like, uh, or not sentence, sorry, the dialogue where it's just like, there's not or, a lot of dialogue. It's just uh, yeah. you know one two words. Uh, phrases or like maybe at max it's like yeah. a couple uh, sentences but like the dialogue was really like short it's just it kind of adds more I feel, I, for Thanks. me personally it adds more to like the tone and the overall thematic 
effect. Wait, can I can I read a quick part from the short story? It's super small. It's super good though. It's it, it's exactly talking about what we just said. So George says, I mean, it, this is uh, Miles uh, Taylor's. This is Jeff just talking about him seeing Heather die through this experiment. He he says, e- quote, every human is born of man and woman. Every human at birth is, or at least has the potential to be beloved of his slash her mother slash father. Thus, every human is worthy of love. As I watched Heather suffer, a great tenderness suffused my body, a tenderness hard to distinguish from a sort of vast existential nausea to wit. Why are such beautiful beloved vessels made slave to so much pain? Heather presented as a bundle of pain receptors. Heather's mind was fluid and could be ruined by pain, by sadness. Why? Why was she made this way? Why so fragile? And I just wow. thought that was really well written and cool. <laughs> yeah. And I think Brutal. just without, you know, without a, I mean, it, there is some way you can do that in film, but it, it, in literature, it's this way, e- That's it's like true. just easier to display these it sort of, is emotions and books are uh, always better than movies books are always better than movies you're saying yeah what what are you on no bro come I on would say books are easy to make easy to write like in writing is so it, it, it is hard no. but it's, okay name me a movie no, no, that's no, better no. than in a book so, what so name many. me one. Oh, you're saying no, no 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 one second you're confusing me you're saying Movies adapted on books or short stories never really live up to the hype of the books, correct? That's yeah, what you're like, saying? I, yeah, no, no, look, that's not what I'm yeah. saying. I, I'm comparing the two arts, like a book from a movie. Would I rather read a book or watch a movie? No, no, no it's very that's different. They're, they're two saying. different concepts. I'm talking like Harry example, Potter movies. They did a Harry, really good job. Even yes, though bro, but they're not. Compa- <laughs> I, I haven't read them, but I've heard from people. They don't even compare no, 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 to no. the. They don't compare to the books. It's the what, same Game thing. Of Thrones. With, Game no, of Thrones. same thing with Game of Thrones. It that's what I'm saying. I heard same thing. That's what I'm saying, bro. It's easier. Okay, look. It's really easy to write. It's really hard to make stuff. Like to make a movie. I don't think it's easy to write. It's not easy to write. It's not easy to write. Especially with fiction where you have to make up stories, make up characters, make up uh, settings, make up dialogues. Scenarios. That's I think that's I I think that's that's about writing, bro, is one of the most complicated things. Creating like unique scenarios that are not cliche. That's difficult. That's true. That's a really good point, actually. I think to write a good, unique story like this, it's hard. But to make it is even harder, in my opinion. I think to also do justice to it. I don't know. Uh, writing a good like story for a character and have them develop through the book is also pretty hard. Where it's like you know you don't want the character just to stay stagnant throughout the book. You want them to change and learn and. Like I've heard grow. with with, did you read GOT, Janish? I read the first book. Okay, the, so the, I, yeah. well, one second. I heard some. So I talked to somebody that read it once. It wasn't you. It was somebody else. Um, and they said that the Game of Thrones, the first book, there was a lot more characters and it was a lot more intertwined, which is crazy to me because Game of Thrones in itself, it's like one of the most intertwined, interconnected like shows out there. Right. And I heard the book is like significantly more. Yeah, I had to write. I had to I had like a list of the characters so I don't forget. Like I had to really. Remember. And also in the front of the book, there was like a map. So we're, we're like, you know, they say like settings, like there's a, they go to, uh, you know, Westeros or whatever, like it is, yeah, yeah. I actually know where it is on the map so I can reference back to it. Wow. That's insane. Yeah. But if you look at it from a producer's point of view, right, they had to cut out, cut down so many characters because of a budget. Like in a movie, you always have a budget and you have constraints yeah. and locations and timings. Yeah. The, the, making a movie is like the most realistic thing in the world. And so that's why it's so hard. It's why like, realistic? Because you're on a time frame, you have a limit on a limited amount of resources. When you're writing something, the imagination doesn't have any limitations because you can write anything you want. Like you can make up, like let's say Good I'm point. writing a book, right? And I and I write about magic and like I write about seven buildings just colliding. That's mm-hmm. gonna require so much money when you actually make it. And so that's what I'm saying. That's why a lot of movies don't live up to the hypes because but that's can't different. Really that, that's com- the full limitations. It's really hard to. F- that's difficult, but that's a different type of it's complexity. Almost impossible, though, dude. To like but it's not the same. Budget. It's not. The that's same. why they messed up Game of Thrones because it was so expensive to make each episode, right? You're no, you're to- absolutely right. But the complexity is different. One is on a creative side of your brain, and the other is on a logical side. Of no, the brain. I think the other side is creative too, dude. Like creative. You producing. think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, think- I, I think they're both creative in their own ways, but like they're both hard let's just say they're both hard man they they are but there's different hard man yes it's hard they're they're both hard in different different ways i guess yes yes i let's i agree i agree agree. they're both hard in their own ways yes 
Because you don't always fair. see the new Harry Potter. You don't always see the new Game of Thrones, right? And there's millions of books books written every day. But mm, they okay. True. But to, yeah, but but to give credit to this movie, the movie makers, it is hard. Millions to, every day. Is that true? Books? I don't think so. Don't millions know. every that's year. A lot of books. Bro. There's more books written than there are movies. Correct? Is that? Am I right yeah, on that? That's correct. Thousands. Sorry, it's thousands. Let me. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like millions yeah. every day, bro. But but to the movie Whoa. maker's credit, it was it was really hard to adapt a short story into a feature because this this would work beautifully as a short film, I would say. But to adapt it or even like a, like it can work in different formats. But that was also, I think, a challenge to adapt like a short, like a, literally a short story into a two hour long movie. That's hard to do, in my opinion. Maybe. OK, well, yeah, maybe. I think I think it could have been done. I think it was done, but I think it could have just been done better. But regardless, like we've decided like it wasn't that I have one more ethical dilemma I was thinking about. So you, you remember the um, the serum B? I think they called it the serum B or something like that, where it was like the obey drug mm-hmm. like this drug. And so Miles Teller realized like that's what this all has been about. Will they obey me if they, if I induce this drug into them? Right. Um. I think that was the kicker. I think that was the kicker out of the whole like experiment. The reason he was doing like how his, Chris's point, what the scientist's point was, how much better would life be if everybody just did what they were supposed to do and they just obeyed. And like, that was really interesting to me, right? That's just like a utopian world. And sure it's perfection. Like everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Everybody is living life the way they're supposed to be living. And everybody is providing the way it's supposed to be providing equally. But the kicker is that's not humanity, right? That's not life. That's not what humans are about. Humans that's are not human nature. It's not right. And that that's the thing. Maybe there's a universe out there because I believe in that there's different universes in the world. But I think there's a different universe out there where maybe there is a utopian society. But that's not what we were bred for. We weren't bred to be perfect. We were bred to make mistakes, to like to love what do you mean to- my bread. What do you mean my bread? Because I believe I believe that there's a God in this world, and I believe that mm-hmm. God created yeah. humans to be imperfect. Maybe mm-hmm. there's other civilizations in different universes mm-hmm. where they were bred to be perfect, but that's just not what we were made to do. Mm-hmm. That's what and, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I just it was an interesting point because wow, life would be amazing if everybody just did what they're supposed to do, but life would be so uninteresting, right? Like, and that's another point in, in this in, in Saran's um in the philosophize this podcast that was another point he made like saran made the point like who would you rather talk to at a party would you rather talk to a guy that made a million and one mistakes or the dude that made every mistake perfectly i mean not mistake made every move perfectly every act he made was was great like he was asb president he was a high school football star he got into stanford he was like valedictorian at stanford he then became like this perfect engineer or whatever whatever the situation may be right or would you rather talk to the person that you know they messed up and then they ended up moving to like bolivia and then in bolivia like they they ended up becoming like a drug smuggler and and that didn't end up working they ended up running from the cartel like obviously extremely drastic spectrums right but who would you rather talk to who's the more interesting person and i think that's what humanity is about right like these mistakes that we make that's what makes us human and that's what makes life interesting i wouldn't talk to either of them <laughs> <laughs> well whatever i just keep but you myself. get the point right <laughs> <laughs> you're just the dude in the back just kind of watching yeah i'm just gonna be i don't know all right well i thought that was interesting so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it's just human nature we're bound to make mistakes and life is about ups and downs okay. we just have to embrace all the struggles and get back up that's what i got every movie is the same and like if you think about it like it's not every movie is, but you know what i mean like, not the same but the same dilemmas same, yeah yeah it's the same or it's like yeah a lot of yeah, the a lot of the what they're trying to get across is the same but they go about it in different ways different ways exactly agreed dude how, how was it displayed we learned this in ap lang it's like either human versus human it, or man versus man machine versus man uh god versus man right it, Every movie and every story ends up becoming one of these three. I think it was those three, right? Am I am I wrong? Uh, I, I something like that. Like... Something along those lines. Well, I, I remember something along those lines. It was like every movie is, is along those three lines, and you know they they end up rooting to the same thing, right? Versus competitiveness. And I think it back. Not every movie is the same. There's so many great movies that are so much better than this. And, and like, in <laughs> oh, fuck, man, relax, dude. We get it. You you despise the film. No, 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 no. no. It, it was it was average. I, I, I give it a six <laughs> out of ten. 
<laughs> it was a good it was an okay film uh, average is seven out of ten no so it's okay it's I'll below average seven. below average. i would say <laughs> it's it's leaning towards below average but it's you could say it's average okay man Look, I think Dude, Swan is, Song wasn't much better. It was better, but not much better. Can I just say, man, like Netflix, please stop just destroying good Solid. stories and just putting out these big name characters just to sell. I get it. Your job is to make money, but like, come on, at least people will watch good stuff. Just give give some, somebody else a chance to like Chris Hemsworth did not need to be associated with this movie at all. Miles Teller killed it. Journey Smollett did an amazing job. But Chris Hemsworth, I'm sorry, but you guys, come on, like. You don't need to cast these big name actors and pay them millions of dollars and then just make less stuff with big name actors. I just I just think that's going to be the downfall of streaming. I don't know. Netflix doesn't want to make indie films anymore. It's already a downfall. They man. do Have want to make Netflix it. Just stop? Yeah, it's I don't know, man. <laughs> they used to make great indie films. Netflix, even their TV series before they used to be good. They're still um, I think, making good stuff. They are. Oh, no, bro. It's not the no? same, though. It's not the same. The Devil All the Time, great, great film. But that was also two years ago. See, but dude, that's the dark side that I was saying, man. Look at how deep that film was. Yeah, that was phenomenal. That was one of the best. The Irishman was also very good. Oh my god. Yeah. The Devil All the Time. That's the movie. They make good stuff, bro, but it's not consistent. Like they used to consistently make stuff that we didn't see before. Like, like in my opinion, I keep saying this. I said this on the podcast before. HBO Max and Apple TV, they're top tier. Their stuff is just quality. Like they don't compromise. I mean, mm. Netflix, they're just, they've compromised. They want to make money. They want to be the biggest. And, mm. you know, wow. they're, 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 really doing, they're, so. they're doing quantity over quality, in my opinion. Netflix. Really? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Have you seen them? like a lot of the shows is like, you're never going to watch them. They're just on your screen. And like, you could just tell from, <laughs> you could really tell from the title screen, like you're, this is not going to be a good show. And or, check or, this out. So in different countries, Netflix, I mean, I think every streaming is like this, but different so Netflix, i'll just say netflix they have different tv shows in the states than they have in mexico or right. they have in thailand yeah right and then we'll see like like i've seen a couple times where uh very korean like i don't uh, like korean dubbed shows or whatever they'll be on like like my netflix account and that's just to get like the people that are into that stuff here right like that's just to make the money from them that's um, just their but, algorithm like they recommend yeah. stuff and they try out different stuff they put different you know they, they're testing constantly Netflix for is money, always though. testing things. What's up? Yeah, I money. mean, they're a company. They're, they're like a public company. Bro, HBO know. Max doesn't. Oh, I don't know if they're. Is HBO public or no? It's owned by Warner. Which, oh, is it? Uh, I believe it so. Is Warner I, public? I should know this. Why do I not know this? Warner. Yeah, Warner Media. Warner Media is a public company. It's owned by. Yeah. I'm well, pretty sure. And I don't see them compromising. Apple TV just came out and they're killing it, but they don't compromise. What, what are they killing it? Like Swan Song was good. The morning show was good. The season two, they destroyed season two of that. I haven't seen C, but I've heard C is really good with Jason Momoa. Um, another one that was very good. Dude, boys, I is that see. Apple TV or is that? No, no that's, that's Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime. Dude, uh, okay. That's, that's awesome. insanely, that's insanely good. That's what, bro, that's a 10 out of 10 in like, no, okay. I shouldn't say that, but it's, it's slightly comparable to Game of Thrones in my opinion, dude. It's so good. Like the quality mm. of that. Sh- but regardless, um, they have a show on Apple TV called The Servant. That's very, it's very deep and dark, but it was good quality to me. Um, they have other stuff on them. That's very good too. I just doesn't come to mind right now. I still think there's so much good content out there, different, different streaming. Like maybe Netflix doesn't have that much good content right now coming out. But like I was thinking about Amazon Prime Video. They have good stuff on there. They do like have a lot stuff. of good stuff. A lot. Yeah. Have you, you know? seen um all the small pieces or all the small things? No, there's a along those lines. there's some good stuff there though. Paramount Plus is I'm I'm sure gonna get better. Yeah, but actually I don't know about Paramount Plus. I take that back. <laughs> but yeah. Peacock yeah. has some decent stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have Peacock, but yeah. All right. Well, I think now we're just talking about streaming. Um, all right. Hey man, that's how conversation develops. Yeah, it was a good podcast. We can continue to talk more about emotional and ethical dilemmas, but I think I'm just going to drive myself crazy thinking about these things. Yes, bro, but I think like, I mean, I don't know. I'm interested. Are you guys not so interested in that? I'm interested. I'm interested. I I think in a certain to a certain extent, though, I think I I'm forever traumatized by taking philosophy classes because my major was like philosophy, politics and law. And I just think I, I at a certain point, I think philosophers are just crazy and they just waste a bunch of time thinking about it's perception it's perception 
Yeah, but some things are just out of our control. We can like it's cool to talk and examine these things. Don't get me wrong to a certain degree, which was good. I think we did a good job I mean, in terms of I don't know if we did a good job. We'll see how this podcast turns out. But I think we had a good balance. We weren't like, you know, crazy overly old, divulged you know. into it. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that, bro. I think like if you're a philosopher and stuff, like it's easily it's easily possible to just go crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But I think like it's a necessary evil. Like if they didn't think about it, would we be thinking about it? That's why it's so, interesting. The thing is, bro, I think religion just answers so many of my questions. I feel like faith in God just makes things more sensible, at least for me. Because I that's what I found, like, believe in God, believe in my religion, Islam, just like it makes, I don't know. It, it makes it, life easier. Yeah, it's a good Not, framework yeah. to have in life. So it's you a don't good have to question yeah. every every little thing about life. Because there's answers to it. You can just exactly. read Exactly. You don't it, you yeah. don't have yeah. to worry about what's the meaning of like yeah. God, exactly. You don't have to worry about it. That's the yeah. point. That's the whole thing. Yeah, bro. But that's also the point, right? Like you no, don't no, have no, to no. worry about don't it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. The other day I was just thinking about like what I happens. want to. <laughs> you know what's crazy? What is interesting? What happens like so like I'm religious, right? In my religion, we believe there's a hereafter. And that's the life that's that goes on forever and ever. And so the whole point of this life is to do good deeds so that you can, you know, be Burn in a good place. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and in my religion, actually, everybody eventually goes to heaven, but some bad people go through hell and then they go and come to heaven. But eventually everybody ends up at the same place. It's just about the journey. But 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 regardless, I was kind of just thinking about like what this other life like encompasses, like how. You know, like what is it more metaphorical? Because it's supposed it's described as something beyond Earth, and I think Earth is already such a beautiful place. Like something beyond it, like how can how can Earth be surpassed? You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. beyond our imagination, and so like some things like that just will drive me crazy thinking about sometimes. I don't know, dude. That's true, man. So like, wait one second, Jenish. What do you think about what do you since what do, what do you think about the? Do, do you ever think about the hereafter, like in terms of after, I mean, all everyone does, but the, the details, man, like, you know, th that's what, I don't know. I've been kind of thinking about a lot. To be honest, I really don't. I like, I've thought about it obviously before where it's like, cause like, um, you know, like Hinduism believes in um, reincarnation where like, you know, if you do good in this life, you'll mm -hmm. be born in a uh, better life like next time. And then, if you do good in like uh, multiple like lives and you achieve like balance with God and stuff, you'll go to heaven, I guess. It's, it's not really like heaven, but like, it, it's pretty much, yeah, it's the concept of heaven. You, we could just say that for now. Um, so, you know, I, I've thought about it, but like, to be honest, I just like, you know, I'll pray to God. I'll, you know, I'll do all this stuff, but nothing too deep where, uh, you know, I'm thinking about what's going to happen next after I die. Like I, Cause I, I don't believe in it that like it might, it might exist as a possibility always, but you know, I'm, I don't believe in it that much to worry about it. If that mm. makes sense. Interesting. I'm sorry, Matt, what are you going to say? Yeah, yeah. 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 So like a point. So in, in philosophy, like a lot of philosophers like talk about like metaphysics and how like there is a perfection form, right. And there is like a perfection, like us. I hate and, metaphysics, but go on. <laughs> regardless <laughs> there's a there's a commonality between metaphysics and like christianity and like even islam where like we end up in a place and there is perfection right so there's that commonality and but my issue with that is we're just like we spoke about earlier we're human we're not meant to be perfect so what is that what is like eternal bliss feel like it, or does it even feel like anything do we or are we just existing because if it's eternal bliss then in itself we're just existing because there is no suffering right and so that that's one problem i have with it like i don't i don't know if that even makes sense to me oh you mean like a utopia type almost well like it kind heaven of is right heaven yeah heaven is utopia kind of it is just perfection this is something i have to look into to be honest with you i i don't i don't know what my uh, i don't know what my teachings say about that and bro metaphysics is actually really like good dude, oh dude i don't such a good I framework for philosophy man can't stand I, I took a i don't i guess it's the class that i took i just oh my god that's fine what okay can i ask what about it, it it's just like the topics that we explored in that class like what okay so 
you're, you're gonna give me PTSD thinking about the specifics, man. It was a really traumatizing experience when I say this, man. <laughs> <laughs> Taking that class forever changed my perspective on philosophy because I thought people were just wasting time thinking about things that were just so easy. So, like Descartes, let me give you an example. Like Descartes, man, he locks himself up for these three days and writes meditations and he starts by forgetting everything he knew and then he starts from that framework like i exist therefore i am and then he develops eventually what is the point of doing that you know what i'm saying the, like, the point of doing it is because nobody's done it before like socrates and other like socrates oh, all he would do all socrates would do is just talk to people and argue with people right so descartes did the exact opposite didn't talk to anybody it was just in his own thoughts Yes, bro. But it's if you read the meditations, it's just a bunch of BS. Like, yes, I, I know I exist. Therefore, I, am. I I think, again, my whole beef with philosophy is that it <laughs> goes into things that are not. It's just a waste of time, in my opinion. No, no, not entirety of it. Some things are, are a waste of time within philosophy because they're already so self-evident. Maybe that's why, because they're always, I don't know. But maybe they haven't always been self-evident. Like, maybe right now, for us, it's common knowledge for this stuff. Because it's already like, been discovered. Yeah, but maybe, like, in the 1600s, when people didn't have time to think about shit, they were just, like, you know, they, they, they weren't thinking about metaphysics and all this stuff, so someone had to put it into words. Yeah, it just, maybe you're going to scrutinize me for this, but kind of like biology, right? It's, it's, it's the same concept. Right. We're all just molecules and we all know that we're all just made of matter. And I think even people back then, we just know we're made of things, even though they didn't know it was made of carbon. Right. Same concept. Like, I think I, before I, I am, I think I think concept. what Ibrahim's having a hard time with is like when we study biology and all this stuff, we can apply it. You know, mm -hmm. we, we can we can make vaccines. We can make, uh, you know, cancer treatment, all this like, you know, treatment for diseases. But like yes. what Ibrahim is saying is like when we say I you know, I, I exist, therefore I am or whatever. How is that like, how do we, what does that mean for our lives? Like, how can we apply that to something? Is there any, I think, is that what you're trying to say? Ibrahim? I don't know. If that... Sort of, sort of. So you're right. Like the, I, I think the field of philosophy is very nuanced and I think it doesn't No, I, I don't know how to articulate this, but I know, I don't want to, it's difficult to, to articulate. It's, it's difficult. really difficult, I but I just yeah. think, I just think there's some things I, I'm just not, you know, some like, see, Maybe you guys don't like biology and some other person does, or I just don't like philosophy. It's just that your much. preference. It's just yeah. my preference. Like I, I think a lot of there's a lot of good philosophers out there. Great, great theories on philosophies. Descartes was, you know, he had his faults, but he was a smart guy. But I just think delving too much into it kind of drives you crazy. That it just makes you crazy and more anxious. At least for me, that's what happens. Yeah, I just become much more. But it's if you allow it. It's if you allow it. No, like I, a, I lot that, a lot, a lot of, of it just believe, becomes BS, though, dude. It's a just, lot of people believe that philosophy became nihilistic because of it, right? But it's the complete opposite. Like they were, they were awakened by it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I think religion is awakening instead of philosophy because that actually answers. Like, there's history to it. There's tangible things, like you know, like let's say in the Bible and the Quran or the Gita. There's it's too words easy words of it by God. You're yeah, right. That, that's that's what I'm saying. It's that's, <laughs> yeah. No, dude, I think philosophy just thinks it's going into like complex things, but they can really be reduced into simple things like they're like Descartes, man. All he's saying is con he's somewhat conscious. Is it reduced or is it expanded, though? He's talking about consciousness. I think therefore I am. He's talking about, yes, I know I have consciousness. I have free will. Mm -hmm. It's just basic things that I don't know. I just think philosophers are extra. That's it. Man. Do you they're think do you extra. think That's you've it. like applied anything to your life from like philosophy from like a philosopher? Not really. To be honest, really, not really, no. And and to my, to be honest with you, I, I I'm not reading as much philosophy as I did, maybe. So yeah, one thing about good philosophy is the the way they develop their logic and argument, like how they get to point A to point B, their conclusions and how they disapprove of things and approve of things and how how they come to conclusions. That's yeah. the beauty of philosophy. How it's so a lot of it and articulation. Yeah, but but so hard, dude. Of... It's so hard. Like even reading this stuff, and then like if I can, if I read something, like I'll give an example. I took this philosophy course, and I had to like explain. It was about one was um this book was was Nietzsche. I don't remember which Nietzsche book, but I had to explain how Perfect. self grief, mm -hmm. uh, how self, how he spoke about self grief and how it came into fruition, and the way he explained it, dude. I'm I swear, bro. It it was only a page and a half. That's or two pages. It was like three different essays, but 
each one was like two and a half pages, something like that. And it was so difficult for me to like articulate and put on paper. Like I had to reread it and reread it and then explain it to like three different people for me to even like, like slightly get a grasp of it, like of how to, how to say it back to some, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, that's beautiful to me, how they're able to just do that. You know, it was a good writing. I would say (laughs) good writing. It's a good writing. Yeah, man. And understanding. All right. Good stuff, boys. All right. I think we should end. It's a good note. Yeah. See you guys next week. Later.